Hi, Stephen from Owner Disown. HP have just sent me the new uh, NV360 15T. It's a two-in-one laptop uh, with a 10th gen CPU. So this is my first look, full review to follow, and I'll also be doing some uh, comparison tests and thermal tests with the uh, new CPU and, uh, and a few little gaming benchmarks. So make sure if you're new to my channel to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that. Spec-wise, it's got the i7 10 510U um, CPU. It's 1.8 gigahertz base to 4.9 gigahertz max boost. Um, it's got the uh, Pascal-based MX250, four gigabytes of uh, VRAM, and it's got 15.6 1080p edge-to-edge -edge glass display. It's also got two eight gigabytes of uh, sticks of RAM running at 2,666 megahertz. It's got one terabyte NVMe storage, a 53 watt hour with fast charge, and uh, Intel 9560 Wi-Fi card. So the GPU is Pascal MX250, and there's two variants, there's a 25 watt and a 10 watt. And you can check out which one you've got by opening up uh, GPU Z and the highlight there, which one I have, and it's a 25 watt. Starting configuration is $1,100, and with that, you get the uh, CPU, of course, and Intel GPU. But step that up to an extra $120, you get the MX250 graphics. And of course you get uh, 60 gigabytes of RAM. Edge to edge display of course included. If you want privacy, it's an extra 70 bucks. Or if you want uh, 4K, you have to then of course select this one here. And you're looking at $1,490 fully loaded. The numbering scheme between Ice Lake and Comet Lake are very confusing indeed. Uh, what you've got to focus on is, for example, in Ice Lake, the 1065. The 10 is the gen indicator, and the 65 is the skew numeric digit. So, or same applies on the Comet Lake. 10 is the uh, gen indicator, and the, the 710 is the, the skew uh, that applies to it. And, of course, then you've got the U or the Y for Comet Lake, and uh, you've got the G7 uh, detailing the levels of the graphics. But it is confusing nonetheless. So, basically... Ice Lake is the new 10 nanometer, while it's a Comet Lake. It's just a basic refresh. It's a 14 nanometer plus, plus, plus. So um, you can get the i3, i5, and i7 variants in, the, in all of them. The, um, the clock, clock rates are going to be slightly higher on uh, the uh, Comet Lake. That's where the biggest boost clocks are going to be. Now, Ice Lake does have increased IPC uh, performance and also has, um, if you want uh, higher graphics, onboard graphics, the, it has the Iris Plus whilst the Comet Lake is often going to be paired with uh, perhaps like the MX250, like in the, this unit I'm looking at now. And uh, of course, the uh, Ice Lake also has integrated Thunderbolt, which is great, and looks like it has a higher memory as well. And from what I understand, it is also going to be more beneficial if you use uh, quick sync uh, programs. But, you know, if you want a higher core clock on the CPU, the Comet Lake is probably the way to go. And a quick look at the uh, Comet Lake processors that are available, split between the U-series and the Y-series. The U-series, of course, has more power, 15 watts up to 25 watts, whilst the Y-series is typically 5.5 watts, 7 watts or 9 watts, a so lower power there, and thus, of course, lower clocks. And if you want a 6-core um, U-series CPU, that is possible now with the i7-10710U. That's a 6-core, 12-thread CPU. Um, now, my... Uh, unit, of course, is the i7-10510U. It's a uh, 4-core, 8 threads, and its uh, base frequency is 1.8 uh, turbos up to 4.9 on a single core, and max all-core active is 4.3. So what you get in the box is a small 65-watt-hour power supply. That's really good. Of course, the laptop, and you get the HP pen. And comparing it to the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1, it is a little bit bigger, and I'd say build quality is slightly more robust on the XPS 15 2 and one And the hinge has a quite nice clean look to it, and you notice there's Envy engraved at the back. It's a nice touch. So on the left-hand side, we have the power connector at the back, USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A port, the power button, air vent, combo headphone mic jack, and an SD card reader. That's a accepts the cards all of the way in which is nice and on the right hand side we have an HDMI port 
Um, we have another second USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A port, a USB uh, 3.1 Gen 1 Type C port, not Thunderbolt, and uh, you can't charge a laptop through it. Uh, this pack USB Type A port, you can actually charge phones with the laptop turned off, so that's a nice touch. Another air vent here, and here is the switch to disable the webcam. So the panel is nice and sturdy. I do like it, it's very rigid, and of course you've got the webcam here up at top. So we have a 720p webcam, and I think it looks pretty sharp, to be honest. And the microphone also picks up the audio pretty well as well. And of course, if you want privacy, you do have the button at the side to, you know, disable it. And this is what it's like when you type. I think it's too bad. And when you disconnect the power, if you're running on battery, I don't see much jitter either. So all in all, I like it. So the keyboard, of course, is all silver, and uh, it's all made of aluminium. Not quite the same sturdy build out i would say as the xps 15 2 one but still pretty nice the trackpad is by synaptics with integrated mouse buttons and it's quite large certainly quite wide here and there's a slight surface uh, texture to it and it does respond pretty well now the keyboard themselves it's uh it's fairly rigid and the island style keys and quite easy to see in the light here you know with no lighting on now it has backlighting is white so that's okay and uh, you've got obviously the function keys here, just one button press and a separate number pad. Now I do like, you've got a fingerprint sensor here, which is pretty good. And uh, you've got the speaker grill here up at the top. So the key lighting has actually two levels of brightness and it's weighed four pounds, six ounces. And with a power brick, total travel weight of about five pounds, not bad. So, it, the panel does show PWM flicker, and that's at 0% brightness, but, you know, increase it even up to 75%, it's there to take it all the way to 100%. So if you are susceptible to eye strain due to that flicker, bear that in mind. And I did try using the PWM tool, and unfortunately I couldn't fix it. So a screen comparison between the XPS 15 2 one on the right and the HP Envy 360 on the left. And you will notice that, the, of course, the XPS 15 has a little bit more of a smaller footprint, that uh, top bezel is certainly smaller. And not only that, the brightness on the XPS 15 is uh, substantially more. At 100% brightness, we're looking at 389 nits versus 232 nits on the uh, HP NV360. Uh, the XPS 15 had 94% uh, of sRGB, and I wasn't able to uh, measure that on the HP NV because of Windows Build 1903. But one thing to note, of course, the brightness, if we lower that down, so there we're at about 50% brightness, and it makes a big difference. And of course, that PWM flicker is uh, on the HP. So it does have a fair bit of backlight bleed there up at the top left-hand corner. With it being a touchscreen, the display is glossy. But despite this, it's still fairly visible and under bright lighting. So 40 decibels is the max fan noise. That's pretty good. So let's check out the speakers. This Bang Aloofson speakers are very good, very impressed. So the pen that comes with it is a barrel shaped pen. It comes with an instruction guide, some spare nibs, and of course the pen with a battery. And the battery you just put in there. And uh, here you've got uh, the, by default, this button here is the right click or select. And this uh, next button here is erase. But of course that can be changed within software within on the computer. So the Surface Pen, Obviously works pretty nice. That's of course Windows Pen Protocol. And of course the HP Pen is just as good. I'm pressing the button to delete it. So for note taking, it's very responsive. Of course I suck, but I use it for writing my notes all the time. And of course you can delete it just as well too. And like I say, palm rejection is fairly decent and there's not much lag at all so as a touchscreen it works very well very responsive and even when you have it inclined in this type of mode here it's very good now if you want to, to apply too much pressure to it it's actually still not bad either so you can use it sketching like this it's got nice strong hinges so running ada 64 stress test for 20 minutes 
the CPU is holding around about 2200 megahertz, you know, which is not super fast. Temperature, of course, is pretty good, 68 degrees, and the watts it's pulling is around about is the 15 watts. The Cinebench R20 score of 1137. To put that in perspective, the 3750H by uh, AMD 4 core, 8 thread, of course, 1641 score, and the 9300H. 1846 points overwatch 720p low settings you get around about 40 45 fps but it's really not very playable and the cpu is really holding it back so um hopefully a few more tweaks and they'll get this fixed but the gpu is holding a good clock rate but the cpu is holding it back so you might as well just stick with the i5 so there we are. that was the first look so remember stay tuned for the uh, the rest of the videos and uh, thank you for watching Remember, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.